Welcome to the Brass and Woodwind Shop. Several months ago I got this distant cornet in my shop to repair. It needed a full overhaul. Most of the work is already done on this, but I had problems plating the valves. So after much trying and experimenting, I decided to just send the valves to Anderson Plating and get them plated there. Anderson Plating is in Elkhart, Indiana. They specialize in plating musical instruments and parts of instruments and they do a very good job. So I sent the valves there and I just got them back and I'm going to open up the package and show you what they look like. There are the three cornet valves and I also sent a French horn valve that I had problems plating and I'm going to do that instrument next, probably within the next few days and want to get started on that. So let's open this up and see what we have. Okay, there is one. There are the valves. It looks like they did a very good job. There is some pitting right there, but that was because of the surface of the valve. So when I lamp the valves down, they are that pitting will go away. When you send the valves in for plating, you need to tell them how much plating you want. So I told them to plate it to 664 thousandths of an inch, and that's about the size of the casings. And I wanted it a little bit bigger than the size of the casings. I'm going to lamp in the casings with a mandrel, and I want to make sure that there is room for those to expand. And also, when they plate the valves, it's not even all over the valve to begin with. So when they put the plating on, it's not going to end up at exactly 664 thousandths. And also plating gets a little bit thicker around corners. So around the bottom of the piston, it is a little bit thicker. But I'm going to lap the valve down so it is cylindrical when I'm done. If I put the valve in the casing, it should not go in right now. If it does fit right now, then the valve is too small. So... That's good that they do not fit right now. They will fit later, and if they're way too big, that's bad also. But I think these are about exactly the right size for this coronet. Here are the tools I'm going to be using a lot in the next several hours. These are ground casing mandrels, and they have a number on them. And that's how many thousandths of an inch uh, diameter that they are. And I have a 661, 664, and uh, two 664s, and a 665 and I'm going to use those to uh, make the casings cylindrical on the inside. These are ground casing sleeves and they also have numbers on them and that is the inside diameter and I'm going to use those for the valves and right now these probably do not fit in there that well which is fine because I'm going to uh, fit these into there and I have two 664s and two 665s I have a micrometer to measure the valves, and the valves are not necessarily the same diameter throughout the whole thing. Uh, they are different sizes throughout, so you need to turn these valves into cylindrical valves and not irregular size valves. I also have some lapping compound, some 600 grit, and then some ultra smooth lapping compound. This is a very fine stuff, and this is usually what I use. I actually bought this 600 grit for this job because I probably will need something a little heavier grit to work on the valves initially, and then after I get those worked down a little bit, then I'm going to switch over to the ultra smooth. And then there's the cleaning cloth, and that's for the inside of the casings, and also to clean the inside of the casing mandrels. I also have this lapping motor that will help lap the valves too. These are the primary tools I'm going to use, but if something comes up while I'm working on this, I may change tools, I may get out some other ones that I need. I'm just going to do whatever it takes to make this work. I'm going to start by checking the size of the valves. Uh, they should be around 664. Yeah, that's pretty tight, and it's a 664. Okay, that one fits, but it's pretty tight, which is actually good for right now. Okay, yeah, so what I'm going to do, since the 664 is really tight, I'm going to start with the 661, and I'm going to put some lapping compound. I'm going to start with the 600 grit lapping compound. And I'm going to put that right on the mandrel. Now I'm going to put the mandrel in. I'm going to work that around. And since I'm not really sure about the 600 grit, 
wrapping compound. I'm going to be careful when I start. I think it should be fine. There's about a three thousandths of an inch gap between the 661 mandrel and the casing which is around 664. So that should leave plenty of room for the uh, more um, coarse lapping compound. But I don't want to go too far. So I'm just going to work this a little bit. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make the inside of the casing cylindrical or as cylindrical as possible. Because over the last 125 years, when the valves get worked, the casings wear down, but they do not wear down evenly. So what I'm trying to do is basically wear it down evenly so that it's a cylind uh, cylinder. Some types of lapping compound break down and the grit gets finer and finer as you use it. And that's the case with this one. I want lapping compound that breaks down as I work it. Because I do not want to overwork the inside of the casing. I just want it to be cylindrical. Okay, that's probably good. So I'm going to pull that out and clean up the excess lapping compound. This is the larger 664 mandrel. I'm going to put some oil on that. And this is just going to help clean out the valve a little bit inside of there. And it's, uh, it's a little tight in there, but which is okay. You can see all of the stuff on the valve that came off. I took the 664 mandrel and I used it to clean out all the junk that's in the casing. And now the mandrel goes in. It's kind of tight, but it does go in. And one thing I checked when I was doing this is this is a 664 sleeve. And if I put this in here, it is loose. There is a little bit of play here. And that's because things get worn down over the years. And this 664 mandrel is probably closer to 663. So that is actually a good thing because when I put some lapping compound on it, that's going to add some space onto there. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of lapping compound on this. And this is the ultra smooth. It's a very fine grit. And I'm just going to put a tiny little bit on there. I do not want to take off too much material inside of the casing. But I do want to continue making it cylindrical inside of here. I'm putting just a little bit of lapping compound on the mandrel. I chucked the mandrel into the lapping machine. And this is a fairly new tool. I got it not that long ago. And it has a foot switch on it. And it has a very low RPM that spins the mandrel. It helps to lap the inside of the casing to get it even. So I'm going to put this on here. I'm being careful and feeling as I'm going. If it grabs the cornet too much, I'm going to stop. What I want is a cylindrical valve. Okay, so I'm going to do that a little bit more from the other side. My goal is for the inside of the casing to be cylindrical when I'm done and to get rid of all of the blemishes inside of there. So I'm going to continue doing that. Then I'm going to clean out the inside of the casing and get all the lapping compound out of there. And I'm getting the lapping compound off of the mandrel. Then I'm going to put that in there and see what we're working with. And I'm just doing this by feel. Okay, I think what I need to do is put some oil on here and that will help to clean it out a little more inside. And then I clean off the oil and inside also. Okay, the mandrel still is a little tight, which is okay. I'm keeping in mind my goal, which is to have a cylindrical inside of the casing and a cylindrical valve.
Right now the casing is pretty close to cylindrical, I just need to finish that up, and the valve is not cylindrical at all. Some of you who know about refitting valves may wonder why I'm doing it this way, using the mandrel and the lapping compound. There are other ways of doing this. They do have stones that you can use. They're, they look kind of like this, but they are adjustable stones that you can change the distance apart that they are, and you can make them parallel, or you can even make them tapered if you want. But uh, what you can do is get that to the exact size, and then put it inside the valve and hone the inside of the valve down. That is probably the easier way of doing this. However, I do not have those stones, and they're quite expensive, and they take some maintenance to upkeep them. So I am doing it the way that works for me. This is an acceptable way of doing it. It just takes longer for me. So my job as a band instrument repair technician is to get the job done and do it well, and also to not destroy the instrument in the process. So the, the way that I'm doing it, it gets all of those things done. It just takes longer to do it that way. Also, they do have honing stones to do the valves, but again, I do not have those, and instead I'm using the valve casing sleeves. These will do the same thing, and they work. It will just take me longer to do it. When a valve is plated, the plating does not go evenly over the valve. Inside of the ports, it is a lot thinner, and then around the edges, where there is a 90 degree angle, it will be a lot thicker. So I'm going to measure the valve in different places and see the diameter of it. Let's see, it is about uh, 664, and let's see, at the end, 664. Now let's check the middle of it, around where the ports are. And, oh, 663 and a half. And the end, and the end is, looks like about 666. And if I turn it, let's see, 667. This is the 665 sleeve, and let's see, that goes in easily up to the end, and then it goes in hard. So um, the valve is smaller than a 665. Let's use the 664, see how that goes in. A little tight on 664. This valve is very close to where it needs to be, except for at the end, so I'm going to take that down a little bit. Now I'm working on the valve. I have it in the lapping machine. I have some lapping compound on it, and I have the uh, ground sleeve that I'm working with. So I'm going to work that back and forth. And I'm, as I go, I'm feeling how much tension there is on it. I'm trying to be careful not to put too much tension on it. I'm going to take the valve out and clean it up and see what we're working with. I'm cleaning up the lapping compound off of the valve. And you can see where it is um, kind of a, a matte finish right there and around here. That's where the valve is a little bit larger and it's getting uh, honed down. There are a few places that are still shiny and that's where the valve is a little bit smaller and it's not making contact with the inside of the sleeve. Every time I lap it a little bit, I put it into the casing. It goes in part of the way, but it's still quite tight. So there's still a ways to go before the valve will work. Yeah, it's getting close, but it's not there yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep lapping it just a little bit at a time until this fits in there a little bit better. But right now it is still too tight, so I'm going to continue using the sleeve and the lapping machine. It's several hours later. I lapped the valve with the casing sleeve several times, and I lapped the casing with the casing mandrel several times also. And the valve does go through. It's very tight still, but it, I can push it through. And in case you're wondering what happened to my hand, that, is, that has nothing to do with working on this instrument. That happened at home while I was cutting some wood. But, uh, so what I'm going to do now is now that this valve goes through, I'm going to lap the 
valve to the casing. And what that's going to do is make sure that the individual valve fits the individual casing. Now it is still way too tight. If I put the spring on here, it would not, the valve would not go up and down. But um, it does go through, so it just needs to be a little looser, and then it should work the right way. I'm going to put just a little bit of lapping compound on here. I cannot put very much on because the valve as it is is so tight that it will get stuck easily with too much lapping compound because there's probably like almost no space in between the valve and the casing. So I'm going to put that in there like that and I can take a dowel and push this back and forth like that. I have the wooden assembly mandrel on the vise and that will help me work on the valve easier. It holds the cornet out in the open. So I'm going to get the dowel and that will help push it back and forth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it back and forth for a little bit and then turn it part of the way like that and then just keep doing that for a little while uh, and I can feel when the valve is getting looser and when it starts to get a little bit looser I'm going to pull the valve out clean off all of the lapping compound both on the valve and inside of the casing and then try the valve the amount of gap between the valve and the casing from a valve that works well to a valve that is too loose is very small. So I have to be very careful not to go too far. So I'm just going to go as far as I need to until it feels like it should. It's probably getting close. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to clean it up and see what I have. And you can see that this rag that I'm using is uh, quite a bit dirtier than when I started. And that's from all the lapping compound and I've cleaned it up I don't know how many times. But that's just what you need to do. So you keep doing that until the job is done. Okay. Now now this is cleaned out, so I'm going to try it in there. Okay, I think I need to put some valve oil on there and clean it up a little bit more. A few drops of valve oil. And what the valve oil does is it helps clean out the inside of the casing. You just work it back and forth like that. And that helps loosen up all of the junk that's stuck inside of there. Because when you use the lapping compound, it is a little bit greasy and the residue from it does stick to the inside of the casing and also to the piston. And even if you clean it up with a cloth, there's still a little bit left on there. Okay, now I'm going to try it again. Okay, it works a little bit easier than before, but still it definitely is not going to work if I put the spring on it. So I'm going to do that again. I will just keep doing it as many times as I need to for it to work well. It's only a few minutes later. I lapped the valve two more times. I'm going to put that in there. And you can see that it is very close. When I was lapping the valve, I was rotating the valve slowly as I'm lapping it up and down. Um, now, since it's close, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the valve guide back in there. I removed the valve guide so I could move the valve around. But now that I'm close, I'm going to put the valve guide back in there. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep the valve like it's supposed to be lined up inside of the casing so that the valve will work when it goes up and down the way it is going to be going up and down inside of the casing. I put the valve guide on. It's one of the Allied Universals. I had to replace that. So I'm going to put that in the way it's supposed to be. And then you can see that the valve works like it should. 
It might need one more lapping, a very light lapping, just to get the graining established. Other than that, this valve should be done. I now have one of the valves on this cornet done, or at least almost done. So I'm going to get this finished up, and then I'm going to do one more video on this distant cornet, and I'm going to give it back to the owner. Thank you for watching, and look in the description below for a link to the playlist on this distant cornet, and please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.